I would like to welcome all of you here uh, this morning on this Remembrance Day Sunday morning. I would ask that you please rise for the play of All Canada and God Save the Queen. Join our hearts in prayer. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given to each one of us, a day in which we pause and take time to remember those who have given so much for each one of us, those who have given their lives, their way of living, their way of being in relationship with others and with you. We thank you for the gifts that they have given to each one of us, the gift of life that has been given to us. And we would pray that as we lift our prayers and uh, love to you this day, that you would speak to our hearts, that you would guide us with your wisdom, that you would direct us 
in being fully your hands, your feet, and your voice this day and always. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our opening hymn this Sunday is Eternal Father Strong to Save. traditional times, before COVID-19, our Canadian war vets, regional, provincial, and federal politicians, and citizens from right across Canada gathered at services of remembrance on Remembrance Day Sunday, like today, and again on November the 11th. Remembrance Day at cenotaphs all across our nation. Together we brought our wreaths, wore our poppies, and to honor our fathers and mothers, grandfathers and grandmothers, and sisters and brothers, through music, prayer, and remembrances. We remembered and honored those who sacrificed so much for each of us. Today and on November the 11th, we will continue to remember those heroes, although these remembrances will be smaller in number because of our current health guidelines. The Remembrance Day service in Waynefleet this year will be a virtual ceremony, live streamed from the Waynefleet Cenotaph on Wednesday, November the 11th at 10.45 a.m. Waynefleet Township 
is asking us to pay our respects virtually, as they must abide by requirements to limit the maximum to 100 persons present, including the participants. All wreaths will be laid ahead of time this year. Wreaths help us to remember, don't they? They stir up memories as we look at the beautiful poppies on all of them that are laid. And memories are important. The irony is that memories become increasingly important during these years of life when we become less good at them. I have wondered lately whether I am able to less remember or whether I simply have too much more to remember. I have noticed on my computer that the more information stored in my memory, the longer it takes to pull something up. And the names, the names, think about the names. They are the real challenge at our age, aren't they? Ever have trouble with the name of someone you have known for years? But there are at least two critical dimensions of memory that are essential to life. First of all, our memories, as long as they remain vivid and lively, will tell us who we are as members of families, of this nation, and of our faith. Our identity and life meaning as individuals are formed through the historic communities that have shaped us and which bind us together with one another and our past. Our communities of blood and long-term relationships, our faith communities, and our national history are all built on memory. And when we belong to them and share in them, we know who we are and why we are here. Memory gives us not only a sense of meaning and belonging, it evokes a sense of obligation for who we are and what we have. Only as we remember our parents, teachers and mentors, friends now gone, and all those known and unknown ones who gave their lives that our lives might go on, do we sense the deep indebtedness that goes with life. Our memories bind us together and obligate us. Yet we live in a world right now of instability, of rootlessness, of loss of place and community, in self-absorption, with a loss of obligation to any real past. Many in our world today live for the moment, live for themselves. We are fast losing the sense of belonging to a, su a succession of generations originating in the past and stretching out into the future. We are losing our sense of historical time and obligation that distinguishes the spiritual crisis of the day. That is what Paul is referring to in his letter to the Thessalonians today as he writes to his friends in a not dissimilar world. He writes, friends, keep a tight grip on what you were taught. Hold fast, hold fast to the traditions given to you. Paul's words remind us to remain 
alive to the traditions that have shaped us, alive to the traditions and sacrifices of Jesus, that we might know the freedom of new life and to know our ever-renewed sense of obligation to others. But how do we remember to remember the historic communities, family, church, nation, and the rituals of remembrance which create and sustain us? Whenever I return to Rockland, Saskatchewan, my hometown, I stop by a little restaurant we used to call Ken's Cafe. It continues to be the gathering place for all the town regulars. When I enter, I slide in alongside at least a half a dozen others, and as I sit there listening, I often wonder why the conversation among these men and women gives me such a feeling of security and comfort. I wonder if it is a reminder of my childhood evenings when people still sat on porches to enjoy the cool at the end of the day. As a child, the sound of these adult voices meant security and order in my life. Stories were told in soft voices, family stories mostly, usually beginning with, do you remember when? There was also the litany of familiar names, names that were safe and familiar, names that inspired and conveyed a sense of faith in community and one another. Now, only a few of us ever sit on our porches, and neighbors don't wander over on warm, lilac-scented nights and talk. Family stories are not told as often. And children don't have that same sense of belonging, of knowing who they are and where they fit in. Listening to the casual, easy talk of the men and women at Ken's Cafe I am taken back to a gentler time, and for just a little while, I feel that ease, that sense of security, and whose we are outside the community that offers its members strong identity through the sharing of strong memories. What are birthdays and anniversaries? The observances of Remembrance Day and July 1st. What is the worship and sacraments of the church, if not a time of remembering where we come from and whose we are and to whom we belong? Paul again writes to his friends in Thessalonia who were struggling with life in an alien environment where the world around them seems to be on a slippery slope into ruin. And they feel like outcasts and are tempted to give up in despair. And so Paul writes to them and he says, Friends, friends, take a firm stand, feet on the ground and heads held high. Keep a tight grip on what you were taught your traditions, whether you receive them in personal conversation or by our letter. Tradition is the collective communal memory of where we came from and therefore who we are and to whom we belong. This is why in church school and family we retell stories. Christian stories and family stories, handling them on as mind-shaping memories 
for our children to live in. Because it is the size of the memories we live in that determines our ongoing sense of identity and importance and purpose. If you limit your memory to only yesterday's activities, you will be as small as the world you were living in. But if you live in the large world of God's story for you and for you, you will grow as great as the story that God gives to each one of us. Today, we remember the stories of our vets. We catch a glimpse of where they got their strength to go on and their renewal of spirit. Their stories inspire and help us to relive in memory. Their stories remind us that as weak as we are, a strength beyond our strength has pulled us through at least this far and at least to this day. So it is possible to find peace. The peace that comes from looking back and remembering to remember that we are never, ever alone. Today and in the days that lead to Remembrance Day, the vet stories that we hear will remind us of those who are part of our past, who are remembered now, and who again become present to us. All those of our memory, living and dead, who sit with Jesus, become present for us in our time, who say to us by their struggle, their frailty, but also by their courage and faith that yes, it can be done. They remind us that we too can do it. We can rise above the common, the ordinary, and reach for a life that is rich and noble and Jesus-like in the years that are yet ours to live. Let us continue to remember and honour those who have sacrificed so much for us and others. Let us keep faith with them as we hold high the torch that they carried. Let us remember to do this for their sake and in their name. This is the word of God for us this day. All thanks be to God. Amen. Let us pray. Loving God, we thank you so much for the memories that bind us together as family, as faith community, as a greater community. We thank you for the stories that we share, for the interactions that happen between each one of us to build that framework that enables us to live our stories and retell these stories in order to give strength and hope and peace and joy to those who listen. We thank you especially today for the stories of our vets, for the legacy that they have passed on to each one of us. We thank you for the sacrifices that they have made for us. And we ask that as a nation, as your people, that we live out 
this story, this truth, this passion that they gave to each of us to live out our lives as a community that is strong and cares for one another and builds a commonwealth of community that stands together and cares and loves one another. We also pray this day, God, for the leaders of our lands right across this world and all of those who are in positions of leadership, medical leadership, and uh, we pray, God, that you would be their wisdom, their inspiration, their passion for their people, a people that they have responsibility for and care about. We ask that you guide them in all their decision making and that their decisions be always made with your sense of compassion and peace and love and wisdom at the forefront. We now lift up to you, God, prayers from the silence of our hearts. Let us now pray in silence. We thank you, God, for hearing these prayers and responding in your love and goodness. We pray all of this in the name of Jesus the Christ, who teaches us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our closing hymn this morning is called, Let There Be Peace on Earth. 